Okay, now this time I just equipped a new 32 to 9 screen to got my lesson being recorded. So now let's directly get it started. Before we do it, I can just have to say that I add a lot of geometry to the surface of those part. Actually, you can see that, but it is just not totally being symmetrized since I only want to add enough density over the parts which may affect its smooth rates. But as for some other parts, for example, as we can see that I just want to make some cutting range at the edge of those flow of those rounded shapes so that uh, it may just not looks to be so bad if I do not got the whole model being totally make them into quads. But this may seem to be a lazy method that I do not make the whole models or the whole vertices being connected together and make it become a perfect cross. But I only add some density over its necessary parts so that it may look uh, may not look to be affect its smooth rates. So since I have already used some atoms, for example, that we can see at the button of the screen, I have already activated the surface sliding, which means that if I want to adjust each vertices, uh, it will not affect uh, its horizontal level, which means that if I just want to look at from the side view, I can still keep the vertices under the same direction of the whole faces and it will just make the faces become flat. So I just want to check every of the necessary parts, for example, especially over those pretty complex or pretty small areas where there will be a lot of problems that as we can see over the shading problems. Uh, actually, as for those kind of hard surfaces, it is really pretty tedious that if we just only got it being sculpted in ZBrush or under the sculpt mode to add pretty a lot of details on that. And we still need to read topology at the next level or just got all the details being baked onto it. So this is really pretty hard actually, not a very clear, uh, clever way for uh, only make some commercial assets, which is not only, uh, which is not being used for only games, but for visualization. So actually the requirements for those topology is not very strict. So we can still keep pretty a lot of polygons on it. So if anybody who has already used the plasticity, as we can see that at the ultimate level, we can also try angulize all the polygons or all the angles of those surfaces that we do not need to worry about it. So maybe the next part, we may also start talking about whether the differences between making those hot ups in plasticity or in Blender, it may seem to be that actually the idea may just be the same. We still make the general shape of it and use the boolean in them. But the only difference is actually is we do not need to consider about its shading problems in plasticity, but we have to do it in Blender. Since now, if we have already activated the M3 tooth, which I mean the machine three tooth, uh, that we can press Y and uh, it can just activate a uh, button, for example, like to you can start choosing to using the normal flatten to make those surrounding areas, which is close to those very complex details become the same flatten percentage as the previous one. But under most circumstances, it may not work pretty nice. So we still have to use some lazy master to fix some of the problems on that. 
So as we can see that, you can also use the same method as what I have demonstrated here, that just by using the K and uh, changing those slides in the topologies that actually if you insist in using such kind of method, it can also help you to make the whole models into quads and its topology will just be, seems to be pretty nice and you can even using the subsurface or the subdivision for it, right? But the more topologies you added for it, the more basic knowledge is you just have a very clear idea inside your mind that you need to connect all the faces or you just need to fix all the end gowns or try angle faces that you just need to find those uh, faces under the symmetry parts so that until you have find their partners, you can just connect them together so that you can make all of them into quads. So that's just it. But the way actually is also pretty tedious, but it would just be much easier than you uh, got it fully started in topology, retopology by like, like, like sculpting and then using the surface snapping on it, right? So I think this method can just help you to save some time on that. It can just help you to directly lead you into the general concept of the whole structure of this model well do not need to worry about its retopology at the next part. Sometimes we can know that some game companies for some senior artists, they're only responsible for the concept designing and uh, they kept the high poly modes in ZBrush and then they threw the high poly mesh to the third party and they let the staffs to retopology. And then there will just be some very strict requirement for those retopologized models. For example, like the face counts in the tweaking on those corner sides so that it is pretty necessary to make all the necessary or the small details onto the retopologized parts. So there will be a very tedious pro process between the uh, staff and the artists to communicate with each other whether which part need to be adjusted or which part do not need to be done like that. So if we do only have uh, one single person to got the whole process being done, I do not think it will be a very clever master. So saving time will just be the most important for us, especially for uh, individual 3D motors. So that is just it. But I have already tried my best to make it smooth enough. As you can see that you can press Y and uh, to activate the functions, but, or press W to switch. And then you can just start uh, judging its effect where it is uh, great to be activated like that, right? So if it does not work pretty nice, I do not think that it's necessary for you to activate the normal sliding. So the next main part actually after I have already fixing and tweaking all those shading problems at the uh, two parts before, the next main part of this gun actually uh, just its uh, middle body. So we just simply start from the very beginning that you can actually make a cube or directly go to the box cutter and do not select anything but just directly draw a box on the ear. So there will just also be a box being created. And then you press Alt plus X to activate its symmetry over the Y axis. 
Then after adjusting the edge shapes, I'm starting using the box cutter to start cutting edges. You use the sliding to do it, and uh, once you got done and want to change its uh, details, you can also go to edit mode before you start adjusting the cutting boxes. You can go to press Q and activate and press ever scroll. You use your mouse scroll to decide which cutters need to be added under the edit mode. So as we can see, this is just uh, how I demonstrate it. It would just be pretty easy. Well, another issue you just need to start considering actually is the blend version. Maybe the box cutter do not support the latest blend version. So maybe you have to prepare some previous blend versions to use the atom if you are familiar with it. So I still keep my Blender 3.6 on it. And uh, if I want to test the latest technology or the updates of Blender, I think I can uh, just prepare another version in Blender 4.0 and start doing all that, right? And then it's just those small parts, as we can see, I'm still using the very lazy method by using the cutting. And uh, I do not need to worry about its topology at all. Just to cut any shapes you want. So this is the first stage you, you need to do. And uh, I suppose those kind of extruded part and the areas where you want to dig a hole, which is really close to the extruded part, I do not suggest you to using the boolean. So it may just make those uh, connecting areas pretty hard to fix and will generate a lot of unnecessary or abundant vertices over the ring. So you can directly using the cut to cut any part you want. So you can simply just Combinate like use those two masters together to extrude in the areas you want. And uh, if you can see that if they're not close to each other, you can also using the box cutter and uh, using boolean by using add. So you can also draw a type on that as well. So there will be no not 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 too much differences on that. As long as you think that it will just be pretty easy for you to fixing the vertices or the shading issues. So if you want to ask for this part, I make the burden side become flattened. You just simply press Alt and A and the, mm, choose left. So the whole face is well just uh, aligned to the left side in a uh, vertical. So this is also a shortcut if you have already added the M3 machine, right? So I just got them being uh, used together. One is hot ops, another is mesh machine. Uh, and the last one is just uh, the hot ops. So we just use these three together. And then the next thing, the next thing I want to make the shader smooth, and then I also want to add a battle for it. It's I just change everything into weights. So as we can uh, find that there's still some tiny issues we just need to fix. And I, because before I start Activite and to test really its bevels, I just choose the angles at uh, 30 degrees, uh, at, at 60 degrees. And now I just, uh, for those parts which have not been, which, uh, have not been automatically being added with bevels. I just add them manually, especially those uh, areas where to show the uh, sharp edges of the whole object. I just simply using Q and press one. So I mark it uh, in the 
box the box cutter will just automatically make this part into both sharp and uh, bevel together. So uh, they will just be in, uh, automatically down rather than you just press Ctrl F and then go to press bevel. So which may just help you to save much more time on that. So as for this part, we can see as for those corner part and how to topology it to make uh, the shading problems look nicer. Actually, you can use the same one as the current one I just demonstrated you, right? And if you wanted to make two triangles into one cross, you can also select the two triangles, face it together and then press Alt J. So it is just the same way as that. You can also choose to use the dissolve edge or set both faces together. So actually the speed when you are familiar with it, they're totally actually to generate the same speed and will not waste too much time on that, right? So as for uh, this topology method, this is the most fundamental basic one that if you're not familiar with that, you can uh, try to watch some basic videos in Maya or any 3D softwares before that I will just teach you how to make a clean topology if you want to make a uh, hot surface into a totally uh, cross object for subdivision molding, right? The, actually, the current method I'm just using may be a little bit curious and you may feel a little bit uncomfortable that it is really a pretty lazy way for those ungown parts where do not have shooting problems. I even do not want to add any topology on that at all. Well, for those complicated areas with shading problems, you still have to use the most classic topology technologies on that to make it looks to be clean. So you may find that uh, it may not look like to be a professional master for that, but actually it really does work.